on the road. Hi, and thanks for joining us on 2K Sports NBA Action. It's coming up with our analysts, Brent Barry and Grant Hill. This is Brian Anderson, along with reporter Ali LaForce. Now the opening lineup for the Los Angeles Clippers. Filling out the wings, it's Mann and George. Mason Plumley out there with Kawhi Leonard. And it's Harden in at the point. And for Detroit, Hayes is out there with Jaden Ivey. Then it's Isaiah Stewart. Then there's Boyan Bogdanovich. And it's Duran in at the five, roaming the paint. Well, we've got a two-time NBA champion at the table, Brett Barry. How does the title team approach the middle of the season? Well, thanks, B.A., for reminding me of that. That's nice of you. But you're not treating these regular season games like anything other than a step in the process to try to get to your best basketball, which you want to play in the playoffs. Championship teams aren't built on ones that try to flip a switch. Now here's Stewart. Just five to shoot. The Pistons need to get one up quick. Ivy shot is off. Now the Clippers with it. Leonard passes to Harden. Yes, and it's Leonard with the assist that time. Well, Leonard usually has humble assist numbers, but that doesn't mean he's not going to keep his eyes open. Well, you look at the length and athleticism of this young Pistons roster, Grant. Quite the foundation. Yeah, B.A., I mean, those are things you can't teach. So the rate at which this new-look coaching staff develops that will determine just how quickly they can deliver on that innate capability. And he drops the first. You know, Grant, what's interesting about the Clippers, they play solid defense, even though they're not overly disruptive. Well, B.A., think about this. So many veterans, they know how to position themselves. They know where the help is coming from, too. And, of course, they know when to pick their spots. He's perfect from the line this time. Yeah, as of right now, Jalen Duran kind of seems like a classic big man. He can block, he can rebound, and he really focuses on finding close-range looks. Here's Mann. He's been productive, averaging just over seven points a game. Plumley passes to Mann. Over Ivy. Mann misses. Here's the Pistons with the ball. Pass to Bogdanovich. Plumley pulls down the board. First quarter of play with about a minute and a half gone by. Now here's Harden. And Harden with the slam. If given the space, Harden's not afraid to take it to the rim. Hayes, the pass to Stewart. Knocked loose. It's stolen by Leonard. It's two on one. Man, the pass to Leonard. Here's Plumley. Pass to Harden. George outside. Five to shoot. Fires from way outside. And they turn it over. Shot clock violation is the buzzer sound. And it's a completely new group for the Pistons. And a new group getting ready for the Clippers. Tice is checked in for Plumley. Tucker comes in for Kawhi Leonard. Norman Powell, he's checked in for Mann. And it's Russell Westbrook in for James Harden. And here's Thompson. He'll bring it up for the Detroit Pistons. They trail by three. Muscala against Tucker. Pass to Burks. Shot is up. They get it back. Wiseman. And it's Wiseman with the jam. And Wiseman just has that great rebounding range to be in there and make something happen for a second chance bucket. Here's Westbrook. Here's Tucker. The Pistons clear it. Defeated by Milwaukee in their last game. They'll try to put that one behind them. It was just a challenging game for them. They executed well, but just not well enough to put themselves over the top. Categorically, you look at that box score from that last game, and they outplayed their opponent in so 
many areas. I thought it was going to at least come down to a buzzer beater, but it did not. And the Clippers miss again. The Pistons trailing. Burks with it. He's picked up by Westbrook. And that misses. That would have put him up. The Clippers have gone two of six to open up this game. Three second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. And he got the whistle on the way up. So he'll be headed to the line for a pair. That's on Mike Muscala. This is where you watch Russell and how aggressive he plays. Such a physical guard. First one falls for him. And for Westbrook, you talk about playing with a controlled intensity. And when he does that, he's unstoppable. So after making the first, he goes one for two. The Pistons have gone only one of six so far. Thompson scanning the floor. Launches the three. One quarter in the books. And it's been a close one. Clippers ahead, up two. And we'll bring you the start of quarter number two when we return. in the books as we get back to a game that's been pretty close so far here. And before we move on, what do you think about what we've seen from the Clippers? They're just excellent first quarter defense. They've been really getting after it. Just a, a great job really of making the game ugly, trying to muck it up a little bit out there. It's a small piece of real estate on the court, but aside from shots at the rim, the corner three, now the most common shot in the NBA. And arguably the most efficient shot in the game. Obviously dunks and free throws are what you want most. But 22 feet away instead of 23-9. That half step closer, B.A., is making a difference in the shooting numbers. Isaiah Stewart out there with Duran. Then there's Boyan Bogdanovich. Then there's Hayes. And it's Ivy in at the shooting guard position. That's the group for Detroit starting the second. First free throw is good. Well, Brent, when you look at the Detroit Pistons, a team that has really struggled recently. Well, that's what youth will do for you. It's really hard to win in this league, and these young guys are learning how to get out and compete on a nightly basis. They are searching for an identity. Hopefully, they'll have the health this year to see some of their young talent really take to it and take those strides. And the Pistons with possession here. Four-point game. This game against Los Angeles here. Their first look at the Clippers. Back to Ivy. This one for three. Knocks it down from distance. Ivy's gotten himself going with a triple. His first basket of the game. Pass to Tice. Powell against Bogdanovich. That one's good from Powell. On the assist from Tice. And they seem to have a hard time picking good shots in the first quarter. But it's all coming together now for them here. There's Bogdanovich with the three. Gets a second attempt to go. Now he's one for two. Total focus from Bogdanovich on that shot. Ready to fire off the feet. And from the sideline, let's catch up with Allie. Cade Cunningham was the Pistons' number one overall pick in 2021, but he knows recognition comes with success. He said, nobody will care until you're winning. I think that's the next step for us. We're trying to take that challenge. It's us versus everybody. Brian, the Pistons, a young and scrappy team, are embracing the challenge. Yes, they are. Thanks, Allie. He is ferocious on alley-oops. With his good hands and wingspan, Duran makes for an easy target on the lob. And the basket by Highland. And that's exactly how you attack length. I love how he doesn't lack assertiveness. Yeah, hard to stop it there if you're the big man. That's just too good a shot and great concentration. Hey, shot's good. A little bit of contact on that shot, but Killian has the strength to get through it. And so it's Highland who brings up the ball for the Clippers. Trailing by two. 
Next matchup, they'll be home against the Nets. That'll be the first of two games on their home court. So for the Clippers, Plumlee's checked in for Tice, and it's Paul George in for Highland. Here's George. Again, the Clippers score. See how comfortable and patient Paul George is inside. Feels like nobody's going to get to that shot. Ivy passes to Hayes. And here in the second quarter of action, just a hair under two and a half minutes played. And that play never gets old. The pick and roll will still be an offensive staple 100 years from now. Trust me. Here's Harden. Duran with a rebound. He expects to make every one of those, and we expect him to make them too. Hayes, the pass to Ivy. Missed inside. The Clippers have gotten three or four field goals in the second quarter. It's Powell on the wing. Leonard outside. Back to Powell. Harden, the pass to Powell. Can't connect from short range. And he gets a lot of points right there at the rim, but the defense determined not to give up the easy deuce there. Here's Bogdanovich. And no good. And George with some nice D. Powell with it. And it's Ivy picking him up. And Powell with the stuff. Just love these opportunities in the open floor to see athleticism like what Norman Powell gave us there. Stewart, the pass to Hayes. Back to Stewart. Outside Bogdanovich. Six to shoot. Here's Hayes. Oh, and he got fouled on his way up. He'll head to the line to shoot two. And this is where you start to get excited seeing Killian Hayes play with confidence. Shooting two. That one's off. It's exciting to look at a young player like Killian Hayes who's got a lot of raw potential and is still fighting to find his way and how he's going to make solid contributions to his team. That's off as well, so he misses both. George outside. A deep three. No good. It's never easy from that distance. But we see him drill those and shoot around all the time. Oh, no, I know he can make it, but th that's warm-ups. So maybe just a step too far. And so it's tied as we head to halftime. Stay with us, folks. We'll be back just after halftime to get the third quarter started. It's the 2K Sports Halftime Show. Hey, welcome back. It is Bedlam here. The hometown crowd loving that first half. I'm Ernie Johnson along with Shaquille O'Neal and Kenny the Jet Smith. It was a closely contested first quarter for Detroit. And in that period, the most they trailed by was three. They gained a little ground there in the second quarter. Kenny, what's your take on Detroit so far? This is what the home fan loves to see. Their squad coming out and putting together strong performance. We'll see a couple individual standouts, but what really stand out is how hard they work and how they're playing. And Shaq, your take on the Clippers? Well, their bench production has been a major factor. Guys have been ready to go when their number is called. And it makes the second half go a lot easier on your main guys when you can spread the minutes around in the first half. And that wraps up the halftime show. Third quarter is set to begin in just a few. And if you're just joining us, we played through the first half in a game that's been fairly even so far. The Clippers shooting the rock well at 46%. Checking out the group for Ty Lue to start the second half. George and Kawhi, the talented forward pair. 
James Harden out there with Terrence Mann. And it's Plumlee in at center. Setting each other up beautifully. I love it. Eight of their last ten points coming off assist. When you think about Paul George, still regarded as an elite two-way player, Brent. Yeah, you get that dynamic play on the offensive end where he's capable of 35 points any given night. But defensively, shutting down a team's perimeter all-star, that is rarefied air for a star player in this league. Here's Harden. After the Pistons picking up a basket just moments ago. And it's all from three-point range. And you just can't afford to give up that kind of look very often. Harden against Hayes. Three-pointer Stewart. Kawhi Leonard comes up with a rebound. And it's Leonard with the ball for the Clippers. Here's Mann. No points so far. And out of bounds. Detroit will have it. Tice is checked in for Plumley. And for the Pistons, they're shooting 44%. A pretty decent clip. Stewart outside. Pass to Ivy. From the high post. He hits the back iron and sinks it. Ivy's got five. And this is exactly what they want to see from Ivy this summer. Confidence in his jump shot. The consistency necessary to be successful. Now here's Leonard. A guy this team turns too often. Averaging almost 24 a game. On the wing, Ivy. Goes up and lays it in nice and easy. And it's a four-point Pistons lead. Okay, good game plan. Start the second half. Three of four so far from the field. Outside for Harden. 4-3. Duran with a rebound. Duran's got four rebounds now. 143 left in the third. Here's Sasser. The layup off target. Los Angeles has gone 0 for 2 from outside here in the third. All right, let's check in with Allie LaForce. Well, some have called Kawhi Leonard a cyborg, but he said, quote, a coach can't put a battery in your back and tell you to play harder to go win games. You have to have the mindset, and you have to train your body to reach the level that you want to play at, guys. No doubt. He is always locked in. Thanks, Allie. George against Bogdanovich. Good work there as it goes. He has six. And nothing you can do right there as George is aggressive getting to the inside and over the top of the defense. Detroit calls timeout. And the Pistons will go for a different look here. Wiseman, he's checked in for Duran. Muscala comes in for Stewart. Thompson, he's checked in for Bogdanovich. And it's Burks in for Ivy. And a new group getting ready for the Clippers. Tucker's checked in for Leonard. Powell comes in for George. Highland, he's checked in for Mann. And it's Russell Westbrook in for James Harden. And he recovers it. Count it. Good. A chance at a two-for-one if they'd like. And I really can't see why they wouldn't. Pass to Burks. There's 31 seconds left to play in the third quarter. Sasser gets the bucket. No way he's going to pass that shot up. The D is way too far back and relaxed in getting out on him. Here's Tucker. Watch the screen. 
Powell outside. Floats one up. Thompson with the block. On the wing, Burks. Over Highland. Burks no good. It's still anybody's game as we reach the end of three. The Pistons on top. They're up by three. And we'll have the start of the fourth quarter for you as soon as we get back from this short break. And a moment now as we take a look at our State Farm assist of the game. <laughs> yeah, just shredding the defense with that feed. Zero chance to stop that. That's what great passing will do for you right there, dissecting the defense with that play. And with three quarters behind us, we'll start the fourth in what is still anybody's ball game. Bogdanovich and Duran together in the middle. Alec Burks is out there with Hayes. And it's Thompson in at the three. That's the five on the floor for the Pistons. Now here's Bogdanovich. Down to five on the shot clock. Count that one. Now Leonard. Westbrook outside. It's blocked. Yeah, anytime you put the ball up near Durham, there's a chance it ends up back in your face. And he gets it to go as they call the foul. He's on his way to the line for one more. All right, guys, a breakdown here of the hustle stats for the Pistons. Well, you have to like what you've seen from them defensively. They've done well contesting shots and have managed to come away with some blocks, too. Well, something else I've seen from them in this game is just how quick they are to capitalize on a turnover. I mean, they're pouncing on that stuff, and you got to be careful when you're handling the ball around them. The Clippers trail. Here's Leonard. So it'll be two free throws. He was fouled in the act of shooting. Those 2014 NBA Finals featured tons of Hall of Famers. Tim Duncan, LeBron, D. Wade. And maybe the guy who was unintroduced but now introduced as one, Kawhi Leonard. Man, he just stole the show winning the series MVP. Did an unreal job on LeBron defensively. Shot 58% from three. What an all-time two-way performance, B.A. Free throw drops for Leonard. Yeah, it's been tough with all the injuries, but Kawhi is a top 75 player, rightfully so. You cannot question his greatness, and it's hard to not think about the what-ifs with him. Both good from the line that time. At this point, you might as well go ahead and chalk up the points when he's at the free throw line. Pretty much automatic. Now here's Burks. Guarded closely. Oh, solid D from Leonard. Not great numbers, but great effort in this one. Sounds funny, but I think he's been a positive for them. Pass to George. Yes, and a nice assist from Harden. So good, so experienced. Paul George can convert the toughest of buckets. Hayes attacking. And finished off by Hayes. Wow. Always fun to see point guards who can elevate above the rim like that. Oh, a strong mindset and even stronger finish. Well, just seeking out weaknesses in the defense and then exploiting it. Now here's Harden. Shot clock at five. Here's Plumley. Lays it up and banks it in. Plumley's got his first points of the game. And you can feel it from the second the ball landed in Plumley's hands that he had his eyes on the rim. Huge basket there. With the teardrop. And Harden with. 
with the block. Bogdanovich against George. Rebounded by the Pistons. Duran's got his fifth rebound in this one. Bogdanovich against George. Bogdanovich, no good. Well, maybe not the best shot against that kind of defense, but he still has the ability to knock that kind of shot down. And up the court come the Pistons on the break. It's hauled in by the Clippers. And here's the fast break. George with it, working on Duran. And he makes it on the layup. That's why you turn to Paul George. These moments are for PG. Detroit calls timeout. They're in front by two. A minute six left in the fourth. And now a moment to present the New Balance player of the game, Jalen Duran. And guess what? This was his game all night. I mean, he tore through the defense and almost never took a bad shot out there. Really, a level of offensive consistency most players can only dream of. Ivy's checked in for the Pistons. And let's send it over to Ali LaForce. I was able to listen in on what Monty Williams was going over with his team. Coach was urging his team to play strong defense, reminding them no easy hoops. Give effort and help when needed. They do say defense wins championships, guys. And Allie, thank you for that. Wow, that takes steady nerves right there. <laughs> Not backing down from this moment here. When the game is close, he kicks it up a notch. Pretty lax defense there. He's going to see fewer and fewer chances if he can't bury those kind of jumpers. 24 seconds left in the fourth quarter here. Here's George. It's good! Timeout, timeout. Yeah, Paul George sharpening his swords now. Love to see him take that shot. Detroit calls timeout. They trail by two. 17 seconds left in the fourth. Guys, your thoughts? A chance to tie it up here. Well, they just need a solid play right now. And Coach going through his index cards to find one to get something going. Ivy. They need this. Count it! Time out, time out. And tie game! Huge basket right there. Time called here. Los Angeles decides to talk it over. The score is tied at 34. One second left in the game.
it goes. Oh, no good. We're headed for overtime. Regulation is ended, and we are headed to overtime. We'll get right back to the action when we return. Boy, these teams have battled tooth and nail for four quarters. Now we're headed to overtime. This one should be fun. Here we go. So it's Detroit now. They've got Alec Burks, Isaiah Stewart out there with Thompson. Then there's Jalen Duran, and it's Sasser in at the point guard position. Oh, what a nice defensive play to disrupt the lob. It's George on the wing. And there's a whistle. He'll head to the line to shoot two. How many times have we seen Paul George single-handedly just close out games by himself? We'll see if this is one of those times. Take a break. Take a break. Two shots. on the first and that gives him a lead an elite player in this league I mean George understands he needs to come through at the line in clutch moments and he hits both free throws here and it's a two point ball game and he's the one person that the coaching staff and the teammates love to see at the line in a tight ball game pretty much bank on these and the Pistons call time here they're trailing by two 141 left in OT making a switch here. Westbrook's checked in. George against Thompson. Drives to the hoop. Here's Stewart. Oh, and he blocks it off the glass. Wow. Here's Duran. Pass to Sasser. Just five on the clock. Out to Thompson. Over Leonard. Wow, Claude doing what he does best, using that length on the defensive end. Yikes, that one stings there, hurts so much more to turn the ball over, especially with how tight the game is. Man, he's checked in for the Clippers. And the Clippers call time here. They're ahead by two. There's a minute 17 left to play in overtime.
Here's George. Pulls it in from the elbow. Nice jump shot. Well, PG can get in the zone, and those zones can stretch for a long time. Bogdanovich against George. Bogdanovich passes to Burks. Denied by Leonard. And they'll keep possession. And the shot counts. He's fouled, and it's a chance for a three-point play. So Stewart will go to the free throw line. It goes on Mason Pumley. That's good from Stewart. That's exactly what this team needs right now. Completing the end one. Expect them to take their time this trip down. Yeah, B.A., the clock is theirs to burn. And the foul on the shot. So he'll take two from the free throw line. And there's the whistle. Foul on the Detroit Pistons. And so both free throws good and it's a three point game. This might be a turning point. Massive possession here. Here's Bogdanovich. Rebound by the Clippers. Perfect timing to rise up and challenge the shot inside. Yeah, not easy to do there. And that's a guy that you can tell takes every possession defensively very seriously. Really feels like they're in control. They've got a big lead with time dwindling. Yeah, looking for a miracle worker out there is the opposing coaching staff. I don't know that they have one. This game seems to be well in hand. Detroit calls timeout. They're behind by five. 23 seconds left in overtime. And so it's Detroit with it. Trailing by five. Stewart, the pass to Hayes. Cash! Come what a timeout. beautiful shot! Brings him within three! And that's got to really do wonders for Killian Hayes and his confidence. Time called here. Los Angeles decides to talk it over. They lead by three. 17 seconds left in the OT period.
Here's man. And there's the intentional foul. No choice but to stop the clock here. Yeah, just trying to keep this game alive. Not a bad foul right there. Doesn't hit the first. That was the one they really wanted. He's got one more though. And he does get the second one. And that gives him a four point cushion. Left side Burks releases. Plumley pulls down the board. And that one goes out of bounds. Last touch by Plumley. Off the inbound. And it's in. And you love it when the heart of your team injects that kind of play. That was huge from Stewart. And they stop the clock as soon as they can with the intentional foul. And he's able to hit the second one, and that makes it a three point lead. The whole arena knows they need a three to force another overtime. So it's the Clippers taking the W in a close one. It was touch and go there for a while, but in overtime, they caught a second win. They really did, and it was wild. Everything it took just to get to the extra period, and then their surge at the end. Whew. All right, now let's check in with Allie LaForce. Allie, what do you have? Kawhi, as this team continues to prepare for playoff basketball, what are the habits you're trying to establish? Just playing the same way every night. Uh, even tonight, we felt like we didn't play too hard. So we just want to be consistent and uh, just keep getting better at playing hard and playing smart every game. Consistency is key. Thanks, Kawhi. Allie, thank you as always. And that about wraps it up. Alongside Brent Berry, Grant Hill, and Allie LaForce, this is Brian Anderson with our entire 2K crew thanking you for watching. We'll see you later.